Welcome to the tutorial Structuring the Library. In this tutorial we're going to talk about the library view once more, but this time more specifically about the various libraries and their folder structure. So let's begin with creating a library. You may have noticed that when you right click you do not have the option of creating a library, only to open or close a library. And this is the same for the toolbar at the top as well as the view menu. However, if you select the menu item, open library, the software will open a window that will allow you to browse to a location on your computer where you have an existing folder that you can open as a library. But you can also take this opportunity to choose a location on your computer and create a new folder, rename it. So I'm going to rename it My Library. And then choose the actual new folder that you have created. And in that way, by opening a library, you've actually created a new library. You can do this, as I just showed you, through the interface, or you can do it directly on your computer. So in the same location where I have my library, I'm going to create another folder, and this time call it your library. And then I'm going to browse again to open a library. And I'm going to choose your library this time. So now I have both my library and your library. This one that I created through the Anime Pro interface and this one which I created directly um, somewhere on my hard drive and then browsed for it like I was opening a folder. So you can also close a library once you've opened it. Um, so I can just simply select it and click on this button here, close library. Or you can once again right click, close library. Um, but what this essentially does is that although it removed the library from the interface of the software so you no longer see it, that those folders still exist on your computer. So my library and your library are both still there. And you can browse for them again by just opening them. And I'll bring the other one back as well. Like that. So as well as creating your own libraries, you can add folders to them. And it's always best to add folders, and there's a convention or a structure that already exists for folders that you would have for each library. Most of the time you create a new folder for a new project, and then you can right click on it and say, new folder. If you give it a minute or you click off, a gray arrow or a plus sign will appear. And if you click on that, you can see the subdirectories of your library. And usually you make three. The first one, which you can rename by double clicking on it. I'm going to name characters. And then I'm going to do it again. Or you can click on this button here that's new folder. The second one you usually make for your props, and you can rename it by selecting the menu item rename folder and I'll make one more I'll do it this way new folder and the last one we would make it the background and say background or BG whichever one you prefer like that and that's the general structure that you would have so you can also delete a folder um, and unlike closing a library, so we never call it deleting a library, we always call it closing a library because like I showed you, it really just unlinks from your scene, um, but it's not actually deleted, it's always still where it is on your hard drive. When you delete a folder, you're actually deleting it and you're deleting its contents, so I'll show you. If I click on this, they're going to ask me if I, I'm sure if I want to delete this folder, so if I say yes, it's now actually gone and I can't recover it and I can't get it back. So you may have also noticed this refresh button here at the top. Um, so unlike other parts of the software which update automatically so you never really have to refresh, because you can do so many things externally with the library, you often need the refresh button. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I wanted to add something to one of my libraries, let's say an image,
then to see that new image appear in this characters folder for my library, I would have to refresh because I added it externally. So only after I refresh did this appear. And now if I actually want to generate thumbnails, that also is something that happens um, as like a secondary step. The first time you generate the thumbnail view is the first time the software is actually generating thumbnails for your um, libraries. And actually a little trick is um, if you need to send your templates to someone else, you can actually delete all these PNGs from those folders to make it slightly lighter because all the thumbnails are actually like little PNGs and they aren't really necessary because as soon as they bring those templates into their scene um, back into the software, they can regenerate their own thumbnails and it saves on the file size of the templates when you do a transfer. So I believe that's it for the tutorial structuring the library. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Symbols.